Top of the morning to you lads and ladies. Before we get started on today's episode of The Pumpkin Show, I've been getting loads of requests. Where's Karen? Is Karen okay? Stop hurting Karen. Everyone relax. I told you she was in safe hands and now I'm gonna go pick her up and you're coming along for the ride. So we're leaving lovely Ireland here and we're going all the way to New Jersey because that's where Karen's being kept. But my old pal Decepticon is actually her caretaker over there. He's been doing a bit of rehab type thing for her, if you know what I mean. So let's head there now. I do enjoy me a window seas, if you know what I'm saying. This is New Jersey, huh? What a shithole. Let's get to Decepticon's house quickly so we can get the fuck out of here. What's that noise? Karen? Karen, you in here? I think it's coming from upstairs. Oh my god. On today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show, Five Nights at Freddy's might be spooking its way onto PSVR, Firewall new map gets teased, and finally, where in the world are 2019's PlayStation VR games? Let's intro. Go to the intro. Do it. Hey there lads and ladies, and welcome to episode 7 of the world famous Pumpkin Patch Show, the only show that is objectively better than any other show on YouTube, and that's a fact. So joining me today, as always, is a very special guest. I'd like you all to welcome the lovely man who takes werewolves within too seriously. Man who takes werewolves within too seriously. How are you doing? Lovely to have you. I hope you're well. Let me know if you guys so, ever learn how to play. You have to so Five Nights at Freddy's, which was a popular game a few years ago that centered around being a security guard that's looking after a pizzeria at night and he's monitoring cameras and it's all about the jump scares. Well, apparently that's coming to PSVR thanks to an ESRB racing that was kind of leaked recently. So the ESRB let slip that Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted, which is the title of the game, has been raced for PS4, which of course you'll have to automatically assume it's coming to PS Viewer. Now the listing has since been pulled from the racing site, as it was probably leaked too early, but Reddit user Future underscore yesterday managed to get a copy and a paste of the description, which we will now read together because reading is fun. This is a VR puzzle slash horror game in which players assume the role of a repair person tasked with monitoring slash repairing animatronic characters at a pizzeria. From a first person perspective, players explore dark hallways, complete puzzles and try to avoid menacing malfunctioning animatronic figures. The game contains frequent screams and jump scares with the words you are dead appearing on screen after players are attacked. Now from my understanding of the previous Five Nights at Freddy's games, it was all kind of like you were, you were security guard, you sat in a booth, you were watching these CCTV monitors and you were kind of just getting scared repeatedly, jump scares left and right. But this description on the ESRB website makes it sound like they're changing the formula up a bit if they're adding in first person exploration and avoiding monsters and shit like that. It seems like it's going to be a more traditional first person horror experience, which I'm all for. I love horror and on VR I feel like horror really excels in that medium more than many other genres do. So Five Nights at Freddy's has kind of already had its 15 minutes of fame back in like 2012 or whenever it was that it became popular. But it'll be interesting to see if VR can give it like a, a reinvigorating kick in the ass. I can see someone like PewDiePie playing that on his channel. That might get the game or the franchise itself 
back in the public eye, if you know what I mean. So we'll see how that goes. My wife is leaving me because of my firewall addiction. It has been way too long since I've gotten to talk about a new firewall zero hour tease or tweeze or article or something like that that we can pour over and comb for details. But that has recently changed thanks to a tweet from First Contact Entertainment themselves. Now the tweet shows a picture of eight of the team members sitting around. They got their conference room set up. Eight PSVR units set up there. That looks very cool. I imagine it's very cool to play it that way. And in the background you can see a screen. The tweet is also captioned. So the caption reads, We've loaded up our conference room with eight PSVRs. Makes it easy to test new maps. Now it's not really surprising that new maps are on the way. We kind of expect that and they've been teasing that 2019, you know, it's going to be a great year for Firewall. So maps were obviously going to be a part of that. But if you zoom and enhance on the image on that screen that's in the background, kind of teasing us a little bit, you might, I feel like we're getting a glimpse there of the new map. It has to be. Now it's very blurry. It's very hard to make out what you're looking at. But it kind of does look like there is some kind of weather effect going on in that screen. Whether it's fog or whether it's maybe a dust storm because it kind of has a brownish kind of hue to it. Now that could be just the way the picture came out. It might not be brown at all. Maybe it's snow. I don't know. But it looks kind of like dusty, maybe a deserty kind of location. I don't know. So I could be completely wrong about what I think it might be. But that is why I want you Firewall fans out there to get in them comments below, take a good look at that picture and let me know what you think it is. I'm not so sure myself. You know, it'll be like the olden days of guessing maps and stuff like that. It'll be like nostalgia. So get in the comments and get at us. But either way, I'm super excited to see what First Contact Entertainment are working on. And whenever they do release another tease or a trailer or an article or whatever comes out, I will be on that shit with a magnifying glass. You can guarantee that. A man who takes uh, werewolves within too seriously. What kind of a map? Would you be interested in seeing? Let me help you guys Give me your number then and I'll call you. Alright? Tumbleweed. So this isn't really news, it's more of a topic that I've been thinking about for a while and I said why not just put it in a pumpkin patch show on a, on a slow news day, which today kind of is. I really just want to test out this green screen over here, which is why I'm doing a pumpkin patch show today. But you know, let's keep that between us. So 2018 was a very good year for PSVR, I believe. It was the year I really focused my channel on focusing on PSVR. It was a year we got Firewall, we got Astrobot, Borderlands 2, those great games out in 2018. And at the beginning of last year, at the beginning of 2018, I made a video titled My Top 10 Most Anticipated PSVR Titles of 2018. And so I thought early January this year I was going to do the same thing, but for 2019 instead, obviously. But when I actually started writing that video, I had to stop at like three games in because I realized there just isn't that many games that we know about in 2019 announced, you know? There's games that were delayed from 2018, like Dreams and Blood and Truths. There's games that had already come out, like Ace Combat 7, but even but I won't even put that on my list because it turned out that that only had three VR missions, so it was still only two. And then there was the Shadow Legends game that is supposedly coming to PSVR. I haven't seen that game in action on PSVR, so I'm not entirely convinced of how good that will be. Looks good in PC, of course. If that turns out to be good, that'll be another game I would have added to the list. Now there's other games coming out too, of course, like Trover Saves the Universe and Vacation Simulator, stuff like that, but I'm not really hyped about that kind of game, so I wouldn't have put that on my list. And so then I kind of had a moment where I was wondering, is 2019 going to be a kind of a shit year for PSVR, despite dreams and despite blood and truth? You know, I've seen other people kind of echo that sentiment in places like Reddit and YouTube comment sections, stuff like that. And you yourself might be wondering the same thing if you're watching this channel. But then I took a couple of things into account. So the first thing I took into account is that Sony never had a PSX in 2018. Now if you remember, PSX is that event that Sony has been doing around December every year since the PS4 kind of launched around roughly 2014, I think it started, I'm 100% on that. But that was a place where PS Viewer games were getting announced, even Visa games back in the early days. So they really showed love to PSVR at these events. I always looked forward to these events greatly. 
And so when they cancelled last year's event, it really eliminated a medium for them to announce new games and to make matters appear even worse. E3 2019, Sony are not going to be at that, so there's not going to be any more PSVR announcements there either. So instead what they're doing is point number two. And point number two is that PSVR games are kind of just coming out of nowhere these days. So because there's no events for Sony or whoever to announce their PSVR games at, they're just popping up on Twitter or on the official PlayStation channel or whatever, you'll see games like Groundhog Day, you'll see games like The Mage's Tale, Borderlands 2, you know, even Five Nights at Freddy apparently now, they kind of just come out of nowhere, a bit of an announcement tease or a video or whatever, and then they release either a month or two later or even sometimes just a couple of weeks later, like they're just popping up. So it's very possible then, and I'd say it's even probably likely that the best PSVR game of 2019 is a game that we don't even know exists yet. It probably hasn't been announced. It's probably just gonna be pop up somewhere on Twitter, YouTube, release the following month or maybe two months later and it might blow us all away. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I think will happen just based on what's been happening so far this year. But that also means it's kind of impossible to predict how well the PSVR is going to do in 2019 in terms of games. It means I can't make a list like I did last year of my most anticipated games, but maybe I'll make a list in December instead and look back at the top 10 throughout 2019. That'll be much more possible, I think. So if you're someone like I was briefly earlier this year, who was kind of concerned at the lack of PSVR games for 2019, my advice would be to just wait and see because games are just popping up left and right. So sit tight and have the faith, you know? I've been told it's good to engage with your audience on YouTube. And that leaves us with our Reader's Mail segment, which I guess is just something that I'm doing now. So if you want to get your question into me, simply go down to the comments below, post your comment or question or whatever with the hashtag PumpMeDaddy. So today's question comes in from Decepticon and he writes, Dear Pumpkins, as you may know, I enjoy playing Firewall Zero Hour. But ever since the grenade launcher got nerfed, my kill-death ratio has seen a significant reduction and people are beginning to notice. What should I do? Well, Decepticon, you know what? I'm not going to answer that question. Instead, I'd like to pass that over to my guest over here and we'll see what he has to say about that. Alright lads and ladies, that is it for today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show, but before I end the video, I have to give many thanks to my Patreon supporters, who you will see floating upon the screen in front of me magically, as if by magic, but through the power of editing. So thank you very much to these people, you guys make it all worthwhile. Now if you would like to get in on this support in action, then check out the description for that Patreon link. But if you don't want to get involved in that Patreon nonsense, then you can simply help me out the old fashioned way by giving me a sexy like or dropping a comment below or even sharing the video somewhere, you know, helping me out that way. I'd really appreciate that too. That's it for this video, lads and ladies. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.